Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my special guest is Barry Bricky, an old friend of ours here at the station because it is that time of year. He is the public education and information officer with the Kingsport Fire Department. And when we say holidays, we got to think of fire safety for a good reason, right, Barry? Absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit more about fire safety. Well, you know, we've, we've been here a couple of times yes. talking about the different holidays that we've had. And with Christmas coming up, people decorate a whole lot more yes. uh, than they do for other, uh, other holidays. And so that is one of our big focuses about where you're placing decorations and, okay. the, and the types. Um, so, you know, the decorations that you do have, make sure that, of, of course, first of all, that you're flame retardant. If you have open flame anywhere inside your home, whether it's a fireplace, uh, candles, something like that, make sure you keep those decorations away from them. That way you don't have a quickly evolving fire. Now, if you do have candles, we really suggest those LED candles. Oh, yes, um, yes, because, you do. Because, you know, they're, they're a whole lot better, they're a whole lot safer, and that way you don't have that open flame that's ready to, you know, spread. Also now, if you're going to be using lots of lights, and, you know, I've been, uh, been running around town looking at different lights, and as you see them at night as you're going home or something, a lot of people have a whole lot of lights on their homes. Oh, yeah, they it do. looks fantastic. But, uh, you know, you need to make sure that all of them are good working order. Check the lights, uh, look for loose connections, things like that. Make sure they're plugged into a power strip or a, or a outlet that can handle it. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, make sure that you're not stapling those lights onto the home or uh, using oh. hooks that could penetrate them, uh, the, the line on it. Make sure that that doesn't happen so it doesn't get cut. And also, you know, Keep decorations away from windows and away from the doors because we don't want your way out to be blocked. So if you've got a Christmas tree or if you're decorating uh, with garland or something like that, make sure that you can open your windows, open your doors in case you're going to have to use that as an escape in case there's a fire. Well, we were talking before around Thanksgiving about the holidays are the biggest time of the year for fires. Mm -hmm. And Christmas was right up there, you know, Christmas time, like in the top five, right? Yeah, Thanksgiving Day was the number one day for home fires, mm -hmm. and then followed by Christmas and Christmas Eve. And so it's because a lot of people are cooking, yeah. and some are cooking that shouldn't be cooking, but there's a lot of people <laughs> cooking and a lot of people having festivities at their homes and maybe having a lot of people in. And, you know, for many of us, we may not have had those crowds in a little while. And so right. now everybody's really wanting to get together. And so they need to make sure that, uh, that they're going to do it safely. And so if you are going to be entertaining over the holidays, make sure your smoke alarms are working properly. Tell your guests about your home escape plan, especially if you're going to have overnight guests because, you know, kids are out from school. Mm -hmm. So you may have uh, kids sleeping over with, with your kids or you may have family coming in to stay for a couple of days. Make sure they know how to get out of your home in case there is a fire. That's, a, that's good to know. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, lots of different things. Uh, if you have anybody in your home in your home that's going to be a, it's a smoker um, we prefer they smoke outside and, and if you are going to be uh, smoking make sure you're using a good heavy ashtray that you can put those cigarette butts in nobody should ever discard cigarette butts in mulch or anything around the home because that could catch the house on fire we don't want that to happen mm -hmm. now the big thing that a lot of people think about at christmas time is if they have a live tree mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people uh, would love to have a live tree, but they have allergies and they're like, we can't do that. But we do have a lot that do a live tree. I've seen a lot of my friends going over and picking their trees out over the last weekend or so. And when you get that tree, when you're out there, get ready to pick it out, whether it's at a lot or whether it's at a tree farm, make sure, first of all, that when you grasp the ends of the branches, that they're flexible, that they, the needles don't just break. If they break or if they come off when you uh, grab it, it tells you that the tree's too dry already. Mm -hmm. And so you need to uh, get one that's really good and fresh and not going to be, uh, you know, breaking off really quickly. Also, make sure that you cut at least two inches off the bottom of the trunk. Two that inches, okay. That way you can okay. get it prepared. And that is if, you've, if you pick one up that's already been cut. And that way it can start pulling in water into the tree once you get it uh, into the home and make sure that the, that tree is going to be at least three feet away from a heat source or a vent or something like that because the vent can dry it out quickly and a heat source like a space heater fireplace anything like that could be a heat source that could catch it on fire gotcha now those trees now you've seen one of our live burns before and you know yes, how I quickly have. a living room could catch on fire well when you add that christmas tree in there mm -hmm. it's about 20 seconds and you'll hit flashover 
Gee. instead of that almost a minute. Mm -hmm. And so a, a live tree can take a room from 72 degrees to almost 1200 degrees in less than 30 seconds. Wow. And so we need to make sure that they are watered really well, that, uh, that they're not pulled over by cats or dogs or children and things like that. And so you have, you have your electrical concerns on there with the wiring and things. But the biggest thing is to make sure that it is a well-watered tree right. and that it's still going to not dry out. And so you need to take those precautions. Now, I am guilty of this, and I, I come home when I notice that I've left a candle burning, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I didn't blow that out. So that is one of the helpful hints I see that you have here, is make sure to blow out all candles before you leave the house or go to bed, and same with turning off the lights, the mm -hmm. Christmas lights. Well, fortunately, most of our lights now are not incandescent. A right. lot of people have replaced them with LED lighting, which is a whole lot cooler. They don't put off as much yeah, heat, which is fantastic. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. And they don't use as much power. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, used to, you could only string like three lights together on the ends. Mm -hmm. And then now with the new LED, some will say you can even string up to six because they pull less power. Oh, wow. But, you know, a lot of times, one or two, I think, would be enough. Um, you know, in a series there, when you get them plugged in, you can use that power strip to make sure that you're not overloading it. And then uh, one good thing about using a power strip or something like that, mm -hmm. you can switch off the lights with one flip. That's true. And that way, you know, at night when you go to bed, click them off. And then also the candles in the, uh, in the windows, you know, the little LED candles that you can get are fantastic. The mm -hmm. battery powered ones. And uh, my father was just telling me the other day, hey, I just bought some new candles and they'll stay on for eight hours and they go off and they'll be off until the time you're, they're supposed to kick back on the next evening. And so he was pretty excited to be getting those in, the, in, in his house because he's always loved decorating with those uh, lights mm -hmm. in the windows uh, for Christmas. So that's a really neat safety feature because you're, you have no cords and it's run on a uh, little battery power and it's enough light from those LEDs just to give you enough uh, to kind of set the mood a little bit. Now, if they could come up with one of these LED candles that scented your room, that would be nice. That's the problem. We all like the smell. If we have fake trees, for instance, we like those evergreen candles, and that's why we use those. So that's the danger there. Well, but you know, there are some, actually. There, there are? are some candles that actually are aromatic that have LEDs in them. And Where you know, do I get those? Well, see, that would make a good gift for you. Yes. Yeah, make a good Christmas gift. And speaking of Christmas gifts, oh, if yeah, you have somebody tell. that's hard to buy for, yes. um, smoke alarms mm -hmm. are a great thing to buy. Uh, there are some great technologies in smoke alarms now. There's some smart smoke alarms that go with your uh, smart home yep. uh, systems. Uh, carbon monoxide detectors, if you have a fireplace or something like that, or gas appliances. A home escape ladder. If you're on, if your bedrooms are on the second or f higher floor, you might need one of those. Uh, another thing people ask about a lot is fire extinguishers. You know, fire extinguishers for the kitchen, yep. maybe one for the garage, maybe one for your car. And then also we like to kind of remind people that, you know, it might snow eventually. <laughs> and so having a, a emergency preparedness kit, mm -hmm. you know, for those power outages uh, for in your home or even an emergency kit inside your car if you're going to be doing some traveling. That way you might have flashlights, blankets, uh, extra cell phone charge, yeah. a battery, something like that. And that way you're prepared in case there's something, uh, some kind of an emergency. Now for kids, uh, for Christmas gifts, safety wise, we need to make sure that the, uh, all the toys and things like that are mm -hmm. age appropriate. Mm -hmm. And that you know there's not any small pieces for the little children that they could choke on. Um, make sure that electronic gifts are UL listed and they have been tested. I know over the last few years, they've had those little hover um, boards that they call them. And yes. they've been a lot of trouble with those when they're plugged up overheating and catching fire. And some of those had were for sale online and had not been tested. And so we need to watch out for that. And then if you've got some seniors in your family, uh, some safety things around the home, maybe a grab bar or two to put in mm -hmm. their bathrooms or near the shower. 
Um, mm -hmm. There's also some sensors that you can attach to your stove that if someone leaves the kitchen, it will actually cut it off hmm. after about eight minutes, wow. which is a really good thing. Uh, motion sensor LED lights for the hallway or the bathroom. That way, when they're, if they have to get up and go through the home at night, it gives them enough ambient light to be able to walk through the home and to be able to see. And then, you know, maybe even think about a medical alarm. Uh, for a family member. That mm -hmm. way, if they have a medical emergency, they have a pendant or a, a button on their wrist where they can call 911 and get some emergency help. You know, they like to, a lot of people like to be independent, but they might need that to kind of help them out a little bit. Those are excellent ideas. And I really like the idea of like the extinguisher and the ladder and different things like that to put around the home to give as a gift. I think that'd be great for like a Christmas gift, but also like a wedding gift, mm -hmm. things like that, or, you know, welcome to your new home gift, things like that. Yeah, lots of great ideas, yeah. you know, wedding gift, Christmas gift, uh, anything like that, anything safety-wise that safety. someone can use at their home is a good idea. Because we all learn in first grade, safety first, so <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. I love that. Well, Barry, we've got about a minute left. Any last helpful hints or any a website people can go to to learn more? Well, people can go to kingsporttn.gov and look underneath there for the fire department. You can go to nfpa.org or Sparky, like Sparky the fire dog, sparky.org. And speaking of our website, the Kingsport Fire Department's currently hiring. And so if you oh. would like to be a firefighter, you can go to kingsporttn.gov slash jobs. Okay, and you have to be at least 18 years old, right? Yes. Okay, very good. So that's good to know. You need several new firefighters, so that's good information. Barry, thank you so much for being here and trying to keep us on the straight and narrow and keeping us safe for the holidays. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us today. This is A Closer Look.